Everyone, welcome back to our continuing discussion of learning and memory. This time we're talking about memory consolidation. Okay, so what is consolidation theory? This is the idea that basically memories have to go from a short-term state into a long-term state. So they have to be stabilized through consolidation processes to be retained in your long-term memory. So short-term memory is storage of a limited amount of information for a temporary period of time. So short-term memory storage. Long-term memory is storage of memory over a very long period of time. Um, this is sort of the, the stable long-term memory that we sort of think of when we think about memory, things that you can remember from a long time ago. Um, there's not really been a discovery of a limit of the amount of information that can be stored in long-term memory. It's theorized that it's essentially limitless. Um, so um, a lot of information can be stored for a, a long time in our long-term memory. So consolidation is the process where short-term memories are converted into long-term memories. And this requires a functional hippocampus. If you have no hippocampus or your hippocampus is damaged, you can't do this. So we're not going to talk too much about short-term memory in this course. You can think of short-term memory as sort of like what you're aware of right now, your, your sort of conscious awareness, the things that you're remembering and thinking about, or things that have come in from your sensory information that uh, you're sort of thinking about right now, things in your environment that you're looking at or or working with. So things in your short-term memory can be kept in your short-term memory as long as you continue to think about them or rehearse with what you're thinking about. So for example, if I give you a seven-digit number sequence like a phone number and you repeat that to yourself in your head, you're keeping it active in your short-term memory through an active elaborate rehearsal uh, sort of process. But information can uh, be passed, sort of converted from short-term memory, things that are transient and part of your con current conscious awareness, into a sort of long-term storage in your long-term memory through this consolidation process. So our long-term memory doesn't end with the hippocampus. There are other regions involved. So let's look at some data here. So we know there's a time-limited role of the hippocampus that initi contributes initially uh, more strongly to long-term memory, and its role fades over time. So an fMRI study that's detailed in your book here shows that healthy subjects are asked to recall news events that occurred within the last 30 years. More recent events cause greater activation in the hippocampus, while older events call, cause the least activation. So you can see the activation of the hippocampus is initially high, and then its role decreases over time. By contrast, the right superior frontal gyrus, so part of your, your frontal cortex, um, activates, uh, shows lesser activation with more recent memories, but greater activation with more remote memories. So what this sort of suggests is that while memory initially depends strongly on your hippocampus, um, with time it depends less and less on your hippocampus and more and more on your frontal cortex. This has been shown a bit more cleanly with um, animal work. So uh, lesion studies or temporary inactivation studies, there's kind of a wealth of evidence that shows um, similar data. Your book specifically talks about um, a study by Mavel et al. So we'll show the figure for that. But here's the basic idea. So you have a fear conditioning paradigm where a tone is paired with a foot shock, and this memory formation requires the hippocampus. So the animal's trained, and then the um, region is either lesioned, or in this example, is temporarily inactivated one day or 30 days following training. So either the hippocampus or the medial prefrontal cortex are inactivated one day or 30 days following. And what we see here is kind of a more stark demonstration of what I have shown in the previous slide, which is, so up here we have represented uh, manipulations of the hippocampus, and down here, uh, representations of uh, manipulations of the cortex. So what we see here is if we inject lidocaine, which is a sodium channel blocker, it's going to produce a temporary or reversible lesion or an inactivation of this brain region. So the hippocampus is inactivated um, one day after training and shows no memory for the task, right? So a strong memory impairment. However, after 30 days, if we inject lidocaine into the hippocampus, memory is just fine. So it looks like memory is initially dependent on the hippocampus and then becomes independent of the hippocampus over time. So after about 30 days, this initially hippocampal dependent memory no longer depends on the hippocampus. We see an interestingly reversed pattern in the uh, cortex. So if we inject lidocaine into the, the frontal cortex, well, one day after training, memory is just fine. There is no impairment produced. However, at 30 days, lidocaine into the cortex produces a dramatic deficit in memory. So what this suggests, taken together, is that while uh, certain forms of memory are initially dependent on the hippocampus, they become independent with time and come to depend upon newer structures like cortex. 
So this is what we would call systems consolidation, right? The idea that memory is consolidated and moves from one system to the other, right? So it initially depends on the hippocampal system, and then when it is fully consolidated, it becomes independent of that system. This is not to be confused with another term that is sometimes used, which is um, cellular consolidation, which is basically just LTP, so what we have talked about previously. So cellular consolidation of a memory is just basically like an LTP-like process, and systems consolidation is becoming independent of one memory system independent on another. Okay, that concludes our discussion of memory consolidation. Next up, we're talking about amnesia.